What's up guys, we're here in my office today um, to start this video. Got this sweet EF hatch background on my computer. Um, but today, uh, we're gonna shift away from the Civic a little bit. Uh, we're gonna be working on my truck. It's a 2002 Toyota Tundra. Um, and we're gonna be putting a new radio in it. Um, I've already put a new radio in it one time, but I bought a cheap touchscreen radio from Walmart and it was awful. Uh, didn't have Apple CarPlay, um, which is the main reason I'm wanting to upgrade. So I picked up a Sony XAV AX100. Um, it has Apple CarPlay, it's touchscreen. Um, this will run you about 300 bucks, uh, give or take. Um, and I'm super excited about it because I think it'll be way better than the little duel that I bought. Alright guys, so we're inside of my 2002 Toyota Tundra and we're going to be replacing this radio right here. Um, this is just a cheap duel that I picked up from Walmart. Um, I really hate it. Uh, it's kind of awful. I would not recommend it to anybody, but that's not what this video is about. I'm just showing you how. You're going to have to take this dash apart to replace the radio. And the first thing you're going to do is these AC knobs right here. You just want to pull them off. And I keep them in a little cup that I have sitting there. Some of them are a little stiff. So, oh, let's see. But you can just pull them off. And there are three Phillips head screws right there below them that you can see. That one's already out somewhere. Probably lost it whenever I changed this radio up. And then up here above the AC the little vent there's a Phillips head screw there and on this side so you're gonna remove all of those and then once you remove all of those this whole dash panel will just pop out so I'm gonna remove those screws real quick and I'll show popping the dash panel out so I've got all of the screws removed the ones above the vents and the ones behind the AC controls and so the easiest way I found to pop this dash off is if you push the tops of the vents back and just grab right in there and just pull straight back and you see it just pops off right there and then you can just sit it down off to the side so to get the radio out there are let's see there's four I believe they're 10 millimeter bolts right there on two on the left and two on the right So I've got all of the bolts out, and then the radio will just pull towards the front. Um, I guess I can show you all of the connections that we have back here. So on this radio, I've got a rear view camera, I have an amp hooked up, and then I have the stock harness, and then there's also the antenna cord. Um, I'm going to reuse this harness that I have right here, I'll probably just cut it loose and Resplice into it. Um, so basically, I'm just going to unplug it. Un I'm going to unplug it from the stock harness, and then we'll take it inside and go over the rest. So this is my new radio. Um, came with the wiring adapter, um, the remote control. It came with an extender for the USB cable because the USB comes out of the back of this radio. Um, I probably won't hook this up. I'll probably just run an iPhone cord out to the front of the truck because that's what I have as an iPhone and that's what will be played in there the majority of the time. And then it also came with a microphone. Probably won't install this in today's video, but it's pretty simple. You just run it behind the plastics up to wherever you want it and then you plug it in and the back of the radio. So I got the old radio out. Um, I'm getting ready to wire up my adapter here. Um, I'm reusing mine because I bought one for the dual radio that I put in there. But I know that it works so I'm going to use it again. Um, so I just cut loose all of the old connectors and stuff and I'm going to wire it up. To wire it up, I'm not going to show this completely because each case could be a little bit different. Uh, because of the colors and stuff normally they're color coded but not all the time so basically you just need to look at the owner's manual of the radio and then look at the packet that comes with the adapter and then just match it up and wire it like that that way 
there's no confusion and everything can be right. Alright, so I've got everything wired up. Um, I gotta put it in the truck and wire up a few more things like the amp turn on thing, uh, the signal wire I guess you'd call it. And then also I have to wire up the reverse end for my backup camera. And then the parking brake wire. Um, not entirely sure why it needs to be hooked up, but it says it does, so I'm gonna hook it up. Um, I'll show you all that in just a second. All right, so I'm out here in the truck. I'm ready to put the radio in. Um, I wired in my amp signal wire and also the reverse in from my camera wire. So basically now all I gotta do is plug all of these cords into the back of the radio and then run the parking brake wire. Um, might do that tonight, might not. It's kind of cold out here, but we'll see. So I'm gonna throw this radio in real quick. All right, so I've got the radio in. Um, I'm just checking to make sure that everything works. Uh, I just snapped this panel back on for now. I gotta throw all the screws back in it and then your radio install will be complete. Um, they're really simple to install on this truck. Uh, I do recommend changing it out from the factory radio because the factory radio is completely awful. Just a new head unit alone will completely change the entire feel of the sound and everything. So I definitely recommend to do it. And I also recommend this Sony radio. So far I'm really loving it. I played around with it for a second and I really like it. Um, Got to figure out a few of the settings and stuff, but other than that I think that this is going to be a great radio.